Okay then guys, so this is part two of uh, ballasting. And we covered the magnetic ballasts um, and we covered using light bulbs. And there's also other things you can use. You can well, you can use most you can use a lot of things that should actually be really surprised me. You can use. You can use heating elements. Now I personally don't suggest using heating elements unless you are you know you've got to have them in something really good now these are i'm not sure whether you're about to see that 115 volts and they are 550 watts okay now i can't use these because i'm on 240 volts okay so if i want to use these i have to link two up and these would have to be used um, actually, so I'd have to connect it here and here and use these ends as my ballast. Um, but I'm not really a great fan of using heating elements unless they've got an actual housing. Um, I mean, I've seen people using kettles with water in. Um, I'm not really a great lover of it, I have to be truthful. Um, you know, you can get a 3000 watt kettle. Um, water and electricity don't mix we all know that um, there are safer ways of doing things um, you know it's a very difficult one as I say these videos I've been making have actually been quite a, a challenge because people as I say people want to know more um, people also want to know why, how, who, what, when, um, and as I say, the whole point of these videos is to keep it simple. So it's difficult. Everyone has their own opinions. Everyone has their own ways of doing things. Now there is one last type of ballast that I haven't covered. Now I wanted to get a different capacitor. I didn't want to show a microwave oven capacitor. Um, but that is what this is, the other vault cinema for. Now, again, okay, so we've got our, yeah, we've got our um, neutral, and that goes to there, and we've got our live, okay, so I just made a four, why would I make that into a four? Random, All right, but anyway, never mind. And we're going for a thousand watts. Yes, I got a thousand, not a hundred this time. But you can't see it, it's off camera. I'm so good at these videos, I'm shocking myself. I'm not really shocking myself, that's silly. You don't want to be doing that. Um anyway, right, where were we? Capacitive ballasts. Now capacitive ballasts are good. There's nothing wrong with them. A lot of people don't use them because you need big capacitors generally to get enough if you want to be using powerful transformers. Um, I can't go into calculations of you because I don't actually know. Um, but I'm just going to, as I say, tell you the basics. Now, your capacitor would look like that. Okay. So you've got your live coming in and a capacitor there. Now say that capacitor is, we'll go for 1,000, yeah, we've got 1,000 again, U, which is micro farads, okay? And that will allow a certain amount through. I don't know, I can't, as it said, I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. Um, I don't know how much current that would pass through stick a transducer um, one of these around it with the correct um, ammeter, current meter, whatever you want to call it you know, around here, around this wire and you can whee, you can have a measurement of amps okay, so you can actually find out um, but now the smaller the value the less current it will pass so this is just 
completely out of the air numbers, okay? We're going to pretend that 1000 microfarads would allow 1 amp, okay? It doesn't, okay? It might, I don't know, okay? So we're going to say that was 1 amp for simplicity, okay? Now you get a 2000 microfarads capacitor, it would be 2 amps. Okay, and obviously you can make series and parallel strings of capacitors to get the right amount of capacitors to put in here. Um, the nice thing about capacitive ballasts is they don't change, they don't cause a, a phase shift. Um, again, I don't really want to go into it too much um, because it complicates things. It really, really does. With light bulbs okay resistive ballasts they also do not cause a phase shift okay um, uh, it's really difficult okay guys it's really difficult because I can't please everyone I'm, I'm not trying to please everyone but I can't you know I can't it's just too much so magnetic ballast inductive ballasts okay they do cause a phase shift in fact on this one it says how much of a phase shift it causes well it doesn't well i say phase shift this way it's so difficult you've got this here goss oh, i can't remember what that sign is uh there um I know Steve Lane, you can make a comment on this video and help me out to what that is. Um, but this is a 0.45, um, so that's actually quite a lot, you know. Um, but that can be corrected with power factor correction, which is obviously a video that I was planning on doing. Um, so, power factor correction, I'm going to do a video. Uh, very sure and i'm gonna send you to somebody else's channel a uh, friend of mine ride fast zero i'm extremely extremely knowledgeable chap uh very 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 helpful um his mind is far greater than mine i think could ever possibly be um, and he has an absolutely brilliant video on why um, why power factor correction is is so good so, uh, you know the advantages of it and you know so I hope that explains a little into ballasts um, but just bear in mind that this is I'm just going 240 volts 50 hertz um, if you're obviously um, say in the states got 115 is it 115 i think so um all your ballasts or i say all of them but your ballasts are likely to be ones that you'd find or the bulbs that you would be finding in your country um, are going to be rated the same volts and either 50 or 60 hertz so you know this is a, a generalization for just current how to current limit things now there is one other thing you can put in here, and this is, uh oh, dare I say it, now this is an invention, should we say, from Boombox Deluxe, I'm sure you won't mind me putting this in here, right now, what he has, is he has a wire coming up here, a wire coming up here, and you'll have to excuse my drawings, he has a plug socket. And this plug socket isn't wired like a normal plug socket. Okay, it has a live coming in here and a live coming out. And you're thinking, well, why on earth would anyone do that? You can plug a 3000 watt kettle in here and you can have a 3000 watt ballast. Awesome. Okay, you can plug a, I don't know, a 1000 watt kettle, uh, a kettle toaster in there and you've got a 1000 watt ballast. You could plug a 50 watt lamp you know in there and you've got a 50 watt ballast it's a cool way of doing it um it's not that great a setup for something like with my big transformers and obviously my ballast control unit so i hope this helped guys thanks for watching as i say do comment